All right, everybody. Ko four GRT Mike here. We're gonna build the seventy centimeter GMRS ground plane. What you're gonna need for this build is a little bit of solder, some way to solder a heat source to solder with, either a torch lighter or a soldering iron. Uh, you're gonna need a tap at eight by thirty two. Your crimps screwdriver we're going to start with five pieces of uh, number 14 Romex at seven inches one SO 239 we have four number 832 by 3 8 machine screws four number eight lock washers um, four ring terminals in the medium size Let's see if I can't dig them out of here and then one ring terminal in the slightly larger size Let's see how the one's a little bigger than the other all right we're gonna start by machining our threads into the SO239 so we're just going to run a tap. It's such a close fit. You don't really need cutting fluid or you don't even need to drill these holes any larger. They fit the number 832 just fine. We're going to go ahead and complete this step for all four of them. All four corners. And we're going to run the tap until it's all the way through and moving smooth and then we're going to back it out if you didn't want to tap your holes and you wanted to go ahead and through bolt it and use a nut on the other side a number six with a, a nut will fit directly through the holes you don't need to tap it or anything but I find tapping it just makes one less thing we have to deal with in the field. I'll catch back up to you when we get the, the rest of them tapped out. Alright, we're threaded out. Now it's time to put the center element in. we got to make sure that we get enough heat into this that it allows the solder to actually adhere to the SO239 and not just to the copper. Yep, I'm not getting a good flow, and I'm worried that, there we go. Alright, that is the center element, and it is installed in the SO239. It should, it's, should be pretty solid in there when you're done. Should have absolutely no problem shaking on that thing. Alright. Now on to the ground elements. Alright, now we're going to crimp and solder a ring terminal to one end of each of the ground elements. Try to make them all right at the end. That way we can pull good measurements on them later. That's one crimp. Let's go ahead and get a little bit of solder in there. Solder and iron still hot, but I think I'd rather use a torch lighter for this operation. It works much better. Get you lined up. We'll put the heat right on what we want to solder for just a second. Then we'll move the heat away so we're not blowing the solder. Still not quite hot enough. We'll move it out to the end. There we 
we go it flowed inside nice we're going to do that to the remaining three elements so we have all four complete and i'll be right back all right y'all we have all four of the ground elements soldered crimped and soldered on they're complete and i have took on the radiating element and i've made a little pencil mark on there see if we can't see it at six and a quarter inches because we're going to try to tune this to 6.5 or uh um 460 456 even is what we're going to try to tune this to because we're looking at trying to get the GMRS and hand band out of this ground plane and it's generally wide banded enough we can get there you know I have a tool for this that actually works a little better stupid harbor freight jobby but it does work a little better than than other ones for stripping off but if you can see right there at the mark that's where I want the tip of my ring to be so I'm going to take and put another mark right in here Which is where I want to cut this so I can go ahead and crimp and solder it on right there. So we'll go ahead and cut this wire. Because the very tip of this ring terminal, when it's installed, is going to be the final measurement not the not the copper wire itself so let's go ahead and we're not going to crimp this super super tight right now or solder it at the moment we're going to line it up we're going to give it just kind of a little bit of a crimp so we can well enough to hold it on there i guess but we're going to want to adjust this so if I give it just a bit of a mechanical hold, I might, might be able to, yeah, I'll be able to spin it around up and down and adjust the actual length of it with just a little mechanical hold. And then I can crimp it and solder it in place after I get it tuned with the VNA. I think I might need to crimp just a little more. Yep, just enough we can still move it. Now we're going to take our machine screws. And our lock washers. And when I took that measurement on this, the six and a quarter inches, it's from all the way down here. And this ends up all the way at the tip down here. The full length. So we're going to go ahead and screw these guys on. We're going to go ahead and put all four of them on. And we're going to try to point them right out the end. It's off a little bit. Let's go ahead and loosen that up and line it up. That's a little better.
see how it comes right square like if you drew a straight line from this hole to that hole it comes straight off and we're going to line all four of them up the same way all right now the ground elements will be a little bit longer than the radiating element from the driven element so we're going to take and go lock on the back of the screw and we're going to pull it out and we're going to measure six and seven eighths inches and we're going to mark each one of them at six and seven eighths and then we're going to cut them all at that length right on my mark I like to use a pencil for marking it's hard to see but the line's so much smaller than a sharpie and it's easier to get back on that on precision when you use a pencil again back of the lug right hooked on the back of the screw six and seven eighths I'll get back to you when we get them all done all right we have them all cut to six and seven eighths now if we left these coming straight out off the side like they are our impedance match to the radio would be quite high we'd be in the 70 78 to maybe 82 so we're going to take and we're going to kink each one of these just about maybe 18 or 20 degrees we're going to try to match that to all of them to be about the same set it on the table we can see which one's high and which one's low by bringing these together you end up having the radiating fields uh, intersect and that'll bring the impedance lower and I find that right about like that where you have a good stand like that we'll get you a good straight on shot that right there tends to get me right around 50 ohms we're gonna go ahead and string this up and I'll run a line out and put the VNA on it and we'll tune it and try to get it wide across ham and GMRS we'll see what happens all right I had to trim it a little bit but I want to show the tune on it at the very top of GMRS we are at 1.59 to 1 with a little bit low of impedance let's see we got 462 1.5 with 40 we're good on that that's the whole GMRS band and then 450 that's the very top of ham 1.16 You can see the impedance is not out of sight on any of it. But you see how it ran all the way across the handband. There's all the way down to 420. Where we are under 2 to 1. With between a 30 and 60 ohm impedance. Depending where you're at across the band. All of it perfectly acceptable. This antenna is going to work probably pretty smashing all the way across ham and GMRS all right the VNA is put up we're back on the tabletop let's go ahead and address what our final measurements are here we have to the very top of the lug 5 and 13 sixteenths on a driven element and then if we go ahead and catch the screw like we did 
come down the end, we have 6 and 7 sixteenths. Final overall measurements. I hope y'all can see the angle that we got these at. It worked out real good. We're covering both bands, HAM and GMRS, and um, pretty, pretty uh, good results on that scan from the VNA. I'm really happy with it. 1.6 to 1 was about the highest we got all the way across both bands and anywhere from 30 to 60 ohms impedance really good match to the radio I'm super happy with that we'll uh, go ahead and construct our tube so we can stow this all away and uh, I'll show you how to do that and how to fit everything in the tube nice and tight y'all so we got our piece of inch and a half PVC in a vise we're gonna add maybe an inch to the overall length of our antenna just an extra inch in there we're gonna go ahead and cut that off most PVC cutters won't cut up to an inch and a half you have to buy special ones to cut that large so any handsaw you have will do, you really don't have to be a hacksaw. cap slides on we put our screwdriver in first radiating element with the tip down slide it in past the screwdriver then I like to take these with the ring terminals to this end put them in off the side that leaves you plenty of room. You can put a throw ball in there. You can put uh, an adapter for your handheld in there. Um, extra screws, things you might need. Capped it off. Good to throw in a pack. <laughs> 